Hey friends, I'm Anka Platon Trifan, Senior Manager of Strategic Event Technology and AI Partnerships, as well as an AI strategist and consultant with over 20 years of experience in the event and AV production industry. I'm also the host of Event Demystify podcast, where I share tactical advice and insights into event production, technology, and innovation. As an independent event planner, marketer, or agency, today you have much flexibility in the range of tools that you can bring into your work. With that flexibility, though, comes a lot of responsibility. Corporate environments would always be slower at incorporating AI, largely due to concerns around data protection and privacy. In fact, uh, what I'm seeing on the ground uh, right now is a lot of regulation <laughs> before education. And while this isn't the ideal path, it's the reality that I see that we're facing end of 2024 and moving into 2025. Now, if you're planning to explore various AI tools, here's my best tip for you. Don't use your corporate accounts to sign up for all kinds of trials that will save you a lot of grief. Instead, just create a free Gmail account specifically set up for your subscriptions, a mailing list, as well as some of those AI tools that you will most likely want to trial and see if they are the right tool for you. This approach really helps protect your data and it keeps you free from spam, which is a good thing, right? And also ensures privacy because ultimately, here's the thing, if you're going to trial something that is free, most likely you are going to pay with your data or with your email address. With that in mind, my goal for this one first session that we are kicking off right now is to lay the groundwork for all of our AI beginners. So we have a bit of a solid foundation as we work together. Now, I have a disclaimer to make to save time and also showcase the power of AI. I decided to generate all the slides for this session using Gamma AI. And if you're not absolutely thrilled with the slides, feel free to blame Gamma or my completely packed schedule, which didn't leave much room, to be honest, for a more polished deck like I would have liked to. So let's just focus on the content instead and dive right in. All right. So first thing first, I want to share uh, a few things uh, because I want to address some of the fears and hesitations that many of us have when it comes to adopting AI. A common concern is obviously the fear of losing our jobs or the belief that technology might replace the roles that we are so used to holding. However, I want to make this point and reassure you that while AI is designed to be a supportive tool, it is not a replacement for the human expertise, for the domain expertise that you all hold. AI can take care of a bunch of the repetitive and mundane tasks, which actually free us time for higher value work like creativity, strategic decision-making, relationship building. So instead of feeling replaced, think of AI as a new colleague, someone that works alongside you. It can enhance your efficiency and it can provide you insights that were previously out of reach. And if you learn how to use AI efficiently and effectively, then you get to remain in control and become more productive without sacrificing quality or creativity. That being said, let me make sure that I also get to my slides here. What is Gen AI? Gen AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can create new content, such as text, images, audio, video, based on the inputs that you provide. It's called generative because it generates something new rather than just analyzing existing data. It's like having an assistant that can brainstorm, create, deliver different type of content depending on what you need. 
And this is especially useful for event planners uh, who constantly juggle creative and logistical tasks. Before diving into the specifics of AI tools and their capabilities, it's important to understand why not all AI systems are created to perform the same task. And the difference lies in their architecture, in their training data sets, and optimization for specific use cases. So one of the main questions that I get asked a lot is why some AI can be doing certain things while other AI can't. And that goes to the specialized training data that a lot of the AI models are trained on. And that is based on the purpose that they were created to. And I like to share this, this one slide where I talk about different types of different types of AI and it's based on what the need might be. So you could have text only AI like GPT models that are trained on a massive amount of written text. They're optimized for understanding and generating tasks, but they like training in images or video data, which limits their ability to generate visuals. Then you have image AI like Dolly or Stable Diffusion, and that's trained on paired data sets of images and their textual descriptions. This enables them to associate visuals with words and then generate images based on text prompts. And then you have video AI like Runaway or Santeja and OpenAI Sora, which requires even more complex data sets, such as sequences of images, frames with corresponding metadata to create coherent video outputs. And then there's also the video model architecture that was built to feed a specific goal. For example, natural language processing models, NLP models, they're optimized for tasks like text comprehension, summarization, and conversions. And examples for those are the GPT-4 models, Claude is one of those, perplexity. Then you have the computer vision models built to analyze and create images with architectures like convolutional neural networks, CNNs, or the Fusion models and examples of this would be Dolly and Midjourney. And then you have the multi models, which are designed to handle multiple input types like text, images, videos. These models, like GPT 4 with vision, can understand and generate both text and visuals. And then you have the audio visual models for video generation or synthesis. Those architectures are designed to process time sequential data for coherent animation or videos, for example, Santeja and Runaway. And then there's different uh, processing and resources requirements based on the type of uh, model and architecture that uh, some of those AI tools are created. For example, generating text is uh, much lighter from a computational point of view compared to uh, creating images or videos, which require a much higher storage for training data sets, more processing power for rendering visuals and all of that it's, goes into the optimization of performance and cost effectiveness as well. So this is another slide that I like to share just because it gives you a good visual of what some of the tools that are there, text to ax AI applications, they all differ in the purpose and the reasons why they were made. And that also means that while some models are more versatile than others, some models also excel better in specific tasks and having specialized AI tools to do certain things, it is important. There is no one perfect tool to fit all the boxes. So if you want uh, a model that would generate images, then you would be using some specialized AI model that was created to do so. And you wouldn't be going to a GPT that was built to be versatile when it comes to language tasks, but not necessarily for image generation or video generation. Now, combining text, image, and video into a single model is a complex challenge. And while some tools like 4 o Canvas or multi-model GPT-4 AI LLMs aim to integrate these capabilities, they might still lack the depth 
uh, of specialized systems due to the complexity of managing such diverse data sets and outputs. So a few of the tools here that when it comes to what are some of the essential tools that I should be using, and I created a list here, uh, there you go. AI is not a one size fits all. Each tool, even in this image, was built and trained for specific tasks based on the type of data it uses and the architecture that it employs. And as a result, some AI can create images because it's been trained with image text pairs and optimization for that task, while other AI can generate videos because it handles sequential image data, video frames, and complex coherent uh, models. While other uh, models like language models are really good at generating tasks, but aren't equipped for visual tasks unless expanded with additional capabilities. We won't be going into all of those tools here right now because that will be something that I would like to cover in more detail in session three. So make sure that you come back for that. But this gives you a bit of a overview to just you know set the stage to see what's out there. Another thing that I'm going to cover in um, our next session, which would be the data and analysis is some automation that you can perform either with Make or Bardeen. Make is my favorite tool because it can really uh, do a lot of things even within their free tier models. And then Bardeen does a lot of that as well. So it depends on your application. And then we'll also look at LLMs in action in our content generation session where we're going to learn what prompt engineering is and how we can generate content effortlessly based on our prompting, but also prompting is very much based on which model you use as well. I also am going to touch on uh, AI avatars. And uh, here's an example of my AI avatar that I've introduced uh, for my podcast. And I remember the first time I introduced it, um, it kind of gave my audience the creeps, but eventually they got used to it. And I even got David T. Stevens on board with that. And now every episode that he puts out there on his YouTube channel, Turn on Wellness, is introduced by his. David V. Stevens, which is his virtual avatar. Since then, I retired my Mira avatar, even though I still use her for trainings and whatnot. But I feel like, you know, I kind of went back to just being myself on my podcast and using AI, specifically Hey Jan, as a speaker coaching. All right. So another thing that I wanted to address really quick is there's obviously a bit of a learning curve. So prepare for that. And while AI generate content serves as a starting point, you still have to customize and refine the output to maintain your unique voice. And in our second session, we're going to touch on what that looks like uh, from a prompting point of view. And I think this is the last of my slides. How can you get started if you're new at this? You can explore uh, several free trials. There's quite a few available out there based on, again, what do you want AI to do for you? Join communities like Club Ichi, where you can connect with other event professionals that are using AI to share best tips and practices. You can attend workshops, and I have a large number of free on-demand workshops on AI on my YouTube channels. And then my my advice to you is to start small. Begin by incorporating AI into one aspect of your planning process and then expand as you gain confidence. All right, this is it for this session. And make sure that you join the next one where we're going to dive into prompting.